slavery and colonization have had a profound and significant impact on the economic development of the Western world. During the period of transatlantic slavery, Western countries, particularly those from Europe, benefited economically from the forced labor of enslaved Africans. Enslaved people were used to produce a wide range of goods, including cotton, sugar, tobacco, and other crops, as well as to work in mines and other industries. The profits generated by this labor helped to fuel the Industrial Revolution and contributed to the economic growth of many Western countries. Despite the attempts of some to brush slavery under the carpet of history, many in a bid to rid themselves of the guilt and shame they feel for their involvement or complicity, it is important to note that slavery was and is a deeply harmful and inhumane practice that has caused significant suffering and harm to millions of people around the world. The economic benefits of slavery have come at a great cost and are not something that should be celebrated or glorified. The fact that people from countries whose wealth came from slavery still look down on the descendants of the very people who created the wealth and comforts they enjoy today is one of the biggest ironies in the world. In addition to slavery, Western countries also benefited economically from colonization, which involved the brutal conquest, subjugation and exploitation of foreign lands and resources. So, let's take a quick look at the top 10 countries that benefited economically from slavery. United States The United States was built on the forced labor of enslaved Africans, who were brought to the country in large numbers during the transatlantic slave trade. Slavery played a very significant role in the economic development of the United States and helped to fuel the Industrial Revolution. It was an important source of labor for the country's agriculture and manufacturing industries. Slaves were used to produce crops such as cotton, tobacco, and sugar, as well as to work in factories and mines. Slavery provided a cheap and abundant source of labor that helped to fuel the growth of the country's agriculture and industry sectors. It also helped to create a class of wealthy plantation owners and merchants who benefited financially from the exploitation of slave labor and inhumane suffering. Brazil A large number of the enslaved Africans brought by Europeans by ship to the Americas ended up in Brazil. Brazil was actually the last country in the Americas to abolish slavery, and it had one of the largest populations of enslaved people in the world. Slavery contributed to the development of Brazil's economy in several ways. It was the primary source of labor for the country's agriculture and mining industries. Sugar, coffee, tobacco, cotton, and other crops were produced on large plantations that relied on slave labor. Slaves also worked in urban areas, in domestic service, and in small businesses. Slavery provided a cheap and abundant source of labor that helped to fuel the growth of the country's agriculture and mining sectors, and create numerous wealthy plantation owners and merchants whose wealth was built on exploitative and inhuman slave labor. Portugal Portugal was one of the main European powers involved in the transatlantic slave trade, and it benefited economically from the exploitation of enslaved Africans. Portugal was also a major colonial power, and its empire contributed significantly to the country's economic growth. During slavery, Portugal established a network of trading posts and forts along the coast of West Africa, where enslaved Africans were bought and sold. The Portuguese also developed the system of transportation for enslaved Africans, known as the Middle Passage, which involved the forced transportation of enslaved Africans across the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas. The transatlantic slave trade was a lucrative business, and Portugal profited from the sale of enslaved Africans to other countries, as well as from the sale of goods produced by enslaved Africans in the Americas. Enslaved Africans were used to produce a range of goods, including sugar, tobacco, cotton, and coffee, which were in high demand in Europe and the Americas. The transatlantic slave trade allowed Portugal to expand its colonial empire and to establish trading posts and forts in Africa and the Americas. Spain Spain was one of the main European powers involved in the transatlantic slave trade, playing a significant role in the exploitation of enslaved Africans, and benefiting economically from it. The country was also a major colonial power and had extensive holdings in the Americas, including parts of South and Central America, the Caribbean, and the Philippines. The Spanish Empire was one of the first to engage in the slave trade, 
beginning with the enslavement of Native Americans in the Caribbean and Central America. In the 16th and 17th centuries, the Spanish Empire expanded its slave trade to West Africa, where it purchased enslaved Africans from local chiefs and traders. These enslaved Africans were then transported to the Spanish colonies in the Americas, where they were forced to work on plantations, mines, and in households. Enslaved Africans were used to produce a range of products, including sugar, tobacco, and gold, which were exported to Europe and brought significant wealth to the Spanish Empire. Slavery served as a bedrock for continued colonization around the world, especially in South and Central America. France France was one of the main European powers involved in the transatlantic slave trade and benefited greatly from the exploitation of enslaved Africans. In the 17th and 18th centuries, the French Empire established a number of colonies in the Caribbean, including Martinique, Guadeloupe, and Haiti, which were dependent on the labor of enslaved people. The French Empire also had holdings in West Africa, where it purchased enslaved Africans from local chiefs and traders and transported them to the Caribbean. The exploitation of enslaved Africans was essential to the economic success of the French Empire, as the labor of enslaved people was a major source of its wealth and revenue. Enslaved Africans were forced to work on plantations, producing sugar, coffee, and other products for export to Europe. In addition to the profits from the sale of enslaved people, the French Empire also benefited from the sale of the products that were produced by enslaved labor. Britain The British Empire was built on the exploitation of labor, resources, and land from its colonies, including its involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. During the transatlantic slave trade, British ships transported millions of enslaved Africans to the Americas, where they were sold to work on plantations, mines, and other forms of labor. Britain also had a large number of its own colonies in the Caribbean and in North America, where enslaved Africans were used to produce lucrative crops such as sugar, tobacco, and cotton. The British government and British merchants also profited significantly from the transatlantic slave trade through taxes and duties on the trade of enslaved Africans, as well as through the sale of goods to slave-owning plantations. The wealth generated from the transatlantic slave trade and the exploitation of enslaved Africans contributed to the development of Britain's economy and played a significant role in the country's rise to global power. During the 17th and 18th centuries, Britain was the dominant European power in the transatlantic slave trade, with British ships making up around 40% of the transatlantic trade. British merchants and traders were involved in every step of the slave trade, from purchasing enslaved Africans in West Africa to transporting them across the Atlantic and selling them in the Americas. The profits from the sale of enslaved Africans were significant, and many British merchants and traders made significant profits from the slave trade. The British also benefited from the slave trade through the development of a number of industries in Britain that were connected to the trade, such as shipbuilding and textiles. The slave trade also played a role in the development of the British financial system, with the Bank of England and other financial institutions providing financing for the trade. So now you know how this small island came by the wealth that fueled its influence around the world. The Netherlands The Netherlands was a major colonial power and had holdings in the Americas, the Caribbean, and Asia. The Netherlands played a significant role in the transatlantic slave trade, with Dutch merchants and traders actively involved in the buying and selling of enslaved Africans throughout the 17th and 18th centuries. The Dutch were active in the slave trade in West Africa, where they established a number of trading posts and forts along the coast. From these bases, they conducted raids on local villages and tribes to capture and enslave people, who were then transported across the Atlantic to the Dutch colonies in the Caribbean and South America. In addition to their direct involvement in the slave trade, the Netherlands also benefited economically from the exploitation of enslaved Africans in their colonies. Dutch sugar plantations in the Caribbean, for example, relied heavily on the labor of enslaved Africans, who were forced to work long hours in harsh conditions to produce sugar, coffee, and other crops. The profits from these plantations helped to fuel the growth of the Dutch economy and the development of the country as a major global power. Denmark Denmark was involved in the transatlantic slave trade from the early 17th century to the early 19th century, 
The Danish West India Company was established in 1671, and played a significant role in the trade of enslaved Africans to the Danish colonies in the Caribbean. The company operated a number of forts along the west coast of Africa, where they traded European goods for enslaved Africans. The Danish West India Company also operated a number of plantations in the Danish West Indies, where enslaved Africans were forced to work on sugarcane plantations. The profits from the sale of sugar and other plantation crops were significant, and helped to contribute to the economic growth and development of Denmark. Danish ships were also used to transport enslaved Africans across the Atlantic, and Danish shipbuilders and shipowners also profited from the trade. Sweden The country was a colonial power and had holdings in the Caribbean and parts of Africa. Sweden, like some other European countries, was not directly involved in the transatlantic slave trade in the same way as countries such as Britain, Portugal, and the Netherlands. However, Sweden did have a colonial empire in the Americas and Africa, and it is possible that Swedish slave traders may have participated in the slave trade during this time. In the 16th and 17th centuries, Sweden established colonies in the Caribbean, including St. Barthélemy and Tobago, and also had a trading presence in parts of Africa, including present-day Ghana. During this time, it is likely that some Swedish traders may have participated in the slave trade, either by buying and selling enslaved Africans or by transporting them to the Americas. Sweden did not have any colonies in Africa during the transatlantic slave trade. It did, however, participate by transporting enslaved Africans to the Americas and the Caribbean. Sweden also had colonies in the Americas and the Caribbean established for the purpose of cultivating cash crops, such as sugar tobacco and coffee, using slave labor. Belgium Belgium was not a major player in the transatlantic slave trade, and it did not have colonies in the Americas where enslaved Africans were taken. However, some Belgian merchants and traders were involved in the slave trade in a limited capacity, mainly as middlemen who facilitated the trade between Africa and the Americas. Belgium did however hugely benefit economically from colonization, particularly in the Congo through the antics of Leopold II. But that's a whole nother horror story. Belgian merchants and traders often served as intermediaries between African slave traders and the European buyers of enslaved Africans, and they profited from the commission they earned for their services. In addition to its role as a middleman in the slave trade, Belgium also benefited from the exploitation of enslaved Africans through its role as a supplier of manufactured goods to the European colonies in the Americas. This helped fuel the country's industrialization. So, those are the 10 countries that most benefited economically from slavery, but other countries were also involved in this practice and derived economic benefits from it there were indeed countries that were not as directly involved as the ones already mentioned, but also profited economically from slavery. For example, Russia, who during the 19th century, became a major supplier of naval maintenance items for the slavery ships, and also grain to the British and French empires, which were the largest buyers of enslaved Africans. The demand for Russian grain increased as the populations of the British and French colonies in the Americas grew, and the profits from ship maintenance goods and grain exports helped to fuel Russia's industrialization. Italy, whose merchants during the 16th and 17th centuries were involved in a variety of commercial activities, including the trade of enslaved Africans. Italian merchants and traders often served as intermediaries between African slave traders and the European buyers of enslaved Africans, and they profited from the commission they earned for their services. Germany, who though not a player in the slave trade, was also involved through its merchants as intermediaries between African slave traders and the European buyers of enslaved Africans, and profited handsomely from the commission they earned for their services. Norway, who like some other European countries, had a bit part involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. Norwegian merchants and ship owners were involved in the trade of African slaves to the Americas, and some Norwegian sailors and traders may have taken part in the slave trade as well. Australia, whose merchants and ship owners in the 18th and 19th centuries, were involved in the trade of European goods to Africa, where they were exchanged for African slaves. Australia also benefited from the exploitation of enslaved Africans through the import of raw materials and finished goods produced by slave labor in the Americas.
The profits from this trade helped to fuel the growth of the Australian economy and contributed to the country's industrialization. So in short, many of the richest European and Western countries today, derived their initial wealth and capital through slavery and the colonization of African ancestors and countries respectively. Do you ever wonder what some of these countries would have looked like today, if slavery and colonization never happened? So although some Europeans did raid African villages in their greed-fueled desperation for slaves, it is also true that some African rulers and authorities, captured and sold their enemies onto the Europeans for personal gain. And those who did, are indeed culpable for the part they played in slavery. However, that does not even begin to justify the shameless brutality, remorseless abuse, gross indignity, and overall inhumane treatment that the Europeans and Americans went on to subject slaves to at the time, nor indeed the very unfortunate legacies of slavery that many descendants of slaves still have to contend with today. So, the much looked down upon Africa is actually traceably responsible for a huge proportion of enduring European and global wealth today, through the hard and free labor forced through the many generations of transatlantic slavery. But will the truth ever be acknowledged? Nope, don't count on it. For the most part, these countries are so hugely ashamed of and embarrassed by their dark past, that they see silence, lies and denial their only options. Well folks, that's it for this video, thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and maybe even learned something new. See you in the next one. If you would like to see even more insightful and informative content, please like, share, comment and subscribe.